this lesson is the first one on energy. In the last lesson, we talked about work and said that work is defined as force times displacement times cosine theta in the cases for which force is constant. Uh, in this lesson, we'll talk about uh, energy, which we said in the last lesson was the ability to do work. Now, uh, that is not a complete definition of energy. It's actually quite difficult to come up with a definition of energy that uh, is applicable to every possible situation. But this definition for energy is going to be sufficient for us to solve most of the problems that we want to solve and talk about most of the things we want to talk about having to do with energy. Um, you can probably list several different kinds of energy, uh, nuclear, electrical, chemical, mechanical, uh, but um, most forms of energy can be put in one of two categories, either kinetic energy or potential energy. And we're going to talk today about kinetic energy. Okay, kinetic energy is energy of motion. It's energy that an object has because it's moving. Okay, now let's think about how does a moving object have the ability to do work? Well, if I'm holding a rock in my hand and that rock is not moving, you're not too concerned about it. But if I were to throw the rock at your head, you'd be concerned. And the reason is you realize if the rock hits you in the head, then it will probably exert a force on your head and displace it by some distance. Okay, in other words, the rock will do work on your head if it hits you when it's moving. So uh, that means uh, that moving objects do, in fact, contain energy because they have the ability to do work. Uh, we'd like to be quantitative, of course. How much energy does a moving object have? So for that, we need an equation. We'll use Ke uh, as our symbol for kinetic energy. Uh, First of all, you would expect that kinetic energy would have something to do with the mass of the object, right? If I throw a ping pong ball at your head, you're not worried. If it's a heavy rock, you're worried because you realize that the ping pong ball doesn't exert much force on you, whereas the rock might exert more. Uh, you would also expect the kinetic energy to have something to do with the speed of the object uh, because if I you know, toss a rock at you at one mile an hour, that's no big deal. But if I throw it at 30 miles an hour, then, well, that's going to do more work on your head when it hits you. Uh, and in fact, kinetic energy does depend on the speed of the object. In fact, it depends on the square of the speed of the object, so that if you throw the rock twice as hard, it actually has four times as much kinetic energy. Uh, and then finally, there's a factor of one-half in here uh, that uh, can be determined uh, either from uh, a derivation that I won't go through or from experiment. If you figure out exactly how much work can a moving object do, you realize that you need this factor of one-half in there to make the numbers uh, come out. So let's do an example. Uh, let's do... Uh, Let's see how much uh, kinetic energy uh, does a uh, car moving at uh, 50 miles per hour have. Uh, if its mass is about 500 kilograms. Okay, now first of all, uh, we need to decide what system of units we're going to use because this mass is in kilograms, but I've got my speed in miles per hour English units. Uh, so 
if we want to use all metric units, we first need to convert this 50 miles an hour into meters per second. So let's do that. 50 miles per hour. I need to multiply by one hour has 300 or 3,600 seconds. That cancels my hours. I need to multiply one kilometer uh, is 0 0.62 miles. It cancels my miles. I need to convert 1,000 meters per one kilometer. It cancels my kilometers. And then I'm left just with meters on the top and seconds on the bottom. And this is approximately equal to 22 meters per second. All right, now we can find the kinetic energy of our car without uh, having to worry about the units. Everything is in metric units now, SI units. The kinetic energy is one half the mass of the car times 22 meters per second. All of that squared. Okay, and if you type that into your calculator, you have 22 squared times 500 is 242,000. We divide that by 2, and you get about 121,000 joules, or 1.2 times 10 to the 5 joules. Um, this, uh, so that's a pretty big number uh, that tells us one of two things. Either a fast moving car has a lot of kinetic energy, uh, which is true, it does, uh, or the joule is a small unit, and actually that is also true. Uh, in fact, many uh, many times we'll work in kilojoules instead of joules because the joule is uh, such a small unit that you quite often end up with very large amounts, you know, a very big number if you're working in joules. Uh, so sometimes you'll see things written in kilojoules, but just remember that in order to uh, get the correct answer when you're using an equation, you need to have everything in kilograms, meters, seconds, and that gives you an answer in joules. Okay, that is our introduction to kinetic energy. Uh, we'll show what the relationship is between kinetic energy and work uh, in a little bit more detail in a later lesson.